So I was scrolling through my phone the other day and I found this photo. This is real, this is me. This is exactly who I'm supposed to be. Hi, my name is Kara, and when I was in high school, I only read Nicholas Sparks books. Please don't judge me. Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a little reading vlog, a Nicholas Sparks themed reading vlog. So, um, when I was in high school, I solely read Nicholas Sparks. There was the occasional Hunger Games and the Twilight Saga, but those were few and far between. I was a stan for Nicholas Sparks. I was cleaning up my basement the other day and I found all of the Nicholas Sparks books that I used to own, so obviously I had to do a reading vlog about this. What is wrong with me? Did I like have no hobbies? Actually, I don't think I did have many hobbies, but um. The first book I found is the best one of this group, and that is The Last Song. I'm going to be reading this one in this vlog for sure, because this is by far my favorite Nicholas Sparks book that I can remember. I was a stan for this book, okay? This book was extremely formative to my teenage years. It was very much in my coming of age era, and I think I memorized the entire movie. I have the entire soundtrack. It was chef's kiss. I loved this movie. I just want to see if it holds up to be honest with you. I think I read this book like five times in high school so I'm actually so pumped to read it to be honest. The next one I have is Safe Haven. As far as I remember don't really remember loving this one as much. I just wanted to point out the fact that literally all of these books look at the back cover. <laughs> Okay, and then we have The Best of Me. Don't remember this one at all. Does anyone else remember it? I don't know, did it get turned into a movie? Okay, and then classic, hand on the hip, leaning against the car. Uh, then we have The Choice. I do remember liking this one. I remember the ending, I cried at it, but looking back and remembering the ending now, cringe to think that I cried at that. It's just a tragedy to me. All right, and then I have two copies of The Lucky One. I literally don't even remember reading this, so don't know why I have two copies. I think I got one at a garage sale. Oh yes, maybe I did. It says 150, so maybe I was like, ooh, add to my collection. But I don't remember reading this one at all. Yes, I'm going to be reading what I can in the week. I'm just honestly the most excited for the last song because it's it's a vibe. Odds that I cry reading this are astronomically high. Am I ashamed of that? Yeah, absolutely. But I am who I am. Can't wait. First book I'm gonna be starting with though is The Notebook. I actually don't have that. I think I did have a copy, but I might've given it away. I couldn't find it in any, any of the boxes, so I downloaded it on Libby. If I remember correctly, it's a pretty short book, so I should be done with that one pretty soon. But I'm thinking goals for reading this week are The Notebook, The Last Song, and then I'm wondering, do I read The Lucky One? Do I figure out if it's worth having two copies? I don't know. I'll keep you updated on what I think. Hi, I'm editing this video right now and I just have to say, if you have not listened to the soundtrack for the last song, it is fire. I like All-Star Weekend, Ra Ra Riot, Edwin McCain. We got some bangers on there, okay? Please go listen to it. I wish I could put it in this video, but I would get copyrighted. So seriously, it's amazing. <laughs> Okay, I want to give you an update. As I'm reading this, it's just so unrealistic to me. Okay, so can we just like recap the notebook a little bit? They had their like summer fling when they were like 16 or 17, right? And then now they're meeting again when they're 29. So this is like 10 plus years since they've seen each other. And the plot goes like this, like Allie, the woman in this relationship, comes to Noah's house unannounced and is like, hey, I'm engaged. I wanted to tell you, but I needed to tell you in person. And then they're talking about how like this one summer, they've never been able to stop thinking about each other. Like, I just don't believe it, okay? Like, I think it takes a little bit more than three months to, to have this kind of longing that they do for each other. I don't know, maybe I'm being a cynic, but it's a little bit unrealistic. <laughs> also, okay, they meet each other for the first time and it's not really small talk. They literally get right into like, so you're engaged. So are, is it bad that I'm telling you to not go back to him or like whatever? And I'm like, you just saw each other again five minutes ago. Don't you think you would catch up on your life a little bit more? 
Okay, I think I'm just hating too much. As unrealistic as this is, I'm still kind of enjoying it. I can't lie. It's really easy to read, but it's really, really unrealistic and I struggle with unrealistic romance. I think for some reason the nostalgia that it's bringing back is overwhelming and I'm enjoying myself reading this. I can hate on it, but I can't hate on myself. So yeah, I'm gonna keep reading. Good morning. So I am 60% of the way through, 70% of the way through. Okay. We all know the notebook premises, right? Like we've all seen the movie. If you haven't seen the movie, just skip ahead because I'm just gonna spoil something a little bit here. So I'm at the part where they're like reconnecting now physically, right? I, it's just wild to me. So if you think about the actual timeline, it's like one day came to his house. They like sat and talked for a little bit. Second day, she came back. And then now he's professing his undying love for her. It was a good start at the beginning but I, I'm, I'm slowing down a little bit. I'm kind of not into it as much as I was in the beginning, but I'm almost done with it. So I'm just gonna finish it today. I literally have maybe an hour reading it. Kind of thinking three stars at this point. Did it live up to my expectations? Yes, my expectations were not overly met. You know what? Honestly, not bad. I thought I was gonna hate it way more than I have. So I'd consider that a success so far. You never know what reading your childhood favorites will do for you. Hello friends. So we're back with an update. I finished the notebook last night. <laughs> if I read another adult calling their father daddy one more time, I can't, I can't. I was cringing beyond cringing. And I'm sure that there are people out there who do that, but where I'm from in America, we don't do that. <laughs> All right, my final thoughts on the notebook. It did not meet my expectations. Um, I mean, my expectations were pretty low to be honest with you, but it was not good. I'm giving it a 2.5 star because I did enjoy it a small amount, but like I didn't really enjoy it that much to be honest with you. I think my biggest issue with it was obviously I'm a lot older than I was when I, when I read this book originally as a teenager. And as a teenager, you have such like an inflated sense of romance of like what romance is going to be. But now that I'm actually in like a stable, normal relationship, it's just like so unrealistic to me reading that stuff. And it just like frustrates me to a point, you know, where I'm just like, like, okay, it's been 10 years since you guys spent three months together. And if you still loved her, why didn't you say something before? Are you sure you have that strong of feelings for her? It just didn't really make a whole lot of sense. And it was literally like, I've never stopped thinking about you. And I'm like, okay, well, if you feel that strongly, then maybe you should tell her earlier, like be an adult. And it was just like the, the language was just so like heightened. I feel like, okay, so they wrote letters to each other, which is very sweet. But I feel like the words that they would say to each other were just like, my soul lights on fire when I see your face. And I'm like, if I said that to my boyfriend, he'd be like, are you okay? You know what I'm saying? Like it was just so ridiculously over the top. I think I've said this before. That's why I struggle with romance in general is because I just feel like it's just so unrealistic. And unless a romance, I can feel the character's humanity more so. I just don't really enjoy it that much. I mean, it was a quick read. I like, I guess I could say I enjoyed it, but like it just, it didn't hold any depth to me. I felt like minimally connected to the characters, but I like, I knew exactly what was happening. So it wasn't like, you know, I had this big moment or whatever where I was crying. It did not live up to my expectations of what I thought it was going to be. Will I still watch the movie? Absolutely. Ryan Gosling, you're just such a babe. But I've moved on to the last song. I, this is the cover. It's been beaten battered over the years. I gotta say, the last song, like I said before, it was formative to me as a teenager. I feel like although this is not gonna live up to the, my hype that I've built in my brain from remembering how I loved it as a teenager, I'm still going to really enjoy reading this because it just brings me back and like all the nostalgia that's coming with it, like remembering Miley Cyrus and Liam Hemsworth, just, ugh, yes. I'll give you an update. I'm only like 20 pages into it, so like nothing like, Big has happened yet, but I'm totally gonna watch the movie after this. I'm so excited. This is exactly how I expected this vlog to go. I expected to have like medium expectations to go in it and then be disappointed reading them. So not surprised, but I will check in with you guys later. Hi, okay, sorry, weird angle here, but obviously reading the last song. And first of all, I totally forgot about Blaze and Marcus. 
100% just total, just didn't even think about them. But screw Marcus, he sucks. Okay, literally I'm reading it right now. Blaze and Marcus are like Ronnie's kind of like friends and they're together. And he's saying, he's like, hey Blaze, go get me some fries, don't eat any. And then in the back of his mind, he's thinking, oh, she's getting a little soft in the belly, a little puffy in the face. <clears throat> Are you serious? Like, screw him. I can't. I don't remember what happens with Marcus's character arc, but like, screw you, Marcus. We don't have time for you. You're disgusting. We hate you. Get out of here. I can't. I'm definitely picturing Miley Cyrus and Liam Hemsworth though throughout the entirety of this book and I love it. <laughs> I, yeah, this book just, it brings back all the memes, right? All right, gonna keep reading. Okay, so one thing that is really making me mad is like, if you've ever watched the last song, it's basically about like two teenagers. One of them is like a, the golden boy and one of them is like this quirky girl. I don't even know if quirky is the right word. We're in a, a chapter that Will is speaking right now. And it's just like, <laughs> girl with the mysterious purple streak in her hair, like, She's so mysterious, but she knows everything. And she was so nice to that little kid. And that's exactly who I want to be with. I'm just like, this is annoying. It just doesn't feel like it's anything new to me. Nothing is unique about it. It's boring. It's boring, okay? Marcus is the literal worst. Like he just needs to go away right now. He sucks. He is so, what is the word I'm looking for? He's so like assuming that women will just be fine with him. And like, he's just like too, abrasive and oh, it just makes me want to vomit. I feel like I'm getting to be a little bit more intrigued. Ronnie and um, Will are have just met again because there's like the turtle thing going on behind their house, which is cute, but ugh, I don't know. They're not good books. They're not good. Like I would 100% not recommend anyone read these. <laughs> And I think this just further solidifies my distaste for romance. If you haven't picked that up yet from watching my videos, this is it, girl. Romance is not it for me. I just don't care unless it's, like the romance is the secondary plot point, right? It's not the primary. I will keep reading because I'm already, I'm already halfway through it and I'm just like, I might as well just finish it at this point. Like I kind of want to know what happens even though I do remember what happens, but like Marcus sucks, we hate him. Seriously, get out of my book. Get out of my life, Marcus. Please leave. Thank you and bye. I have changed. I am a changed woman since I read this when I was a teenager and it's so evident. I remember thinking that Will was like the hottest man that could ever have existed and like he's the dream boat. Not anymore, not anymore. I mean, what he does for Ronnie, quite nice. Also at the same time, I'm just like, this is so unrealistic. I'm jaded. I have become a jaded woman. Am I sad about it? No, I'm okay with the real world. And I, I think I like stories that represent the real world more than these stories, which are just like, this would never happen. I, I don't, or it's not even this would never happen. It's like, no one speaks like this and no one says these things to these people. I appreciate this book for what it gave me as a teenager, but as an adult, this is another time. I'm like, I feel like I am just peeling back the layers of who I was as a teenager. And I just can't believe how much I have changed from then to now. Like I am a totally different person than who I was as a teenager. And it's just like, I don't know. It just makes me like think about my life, you know? You no, know, as I reflect on like reading this book and as I reflect on like what I was like as a teenager, I'm just, I've come a long way since then. Like change is good, right? Change is good for humans. and. It's important for us to grow and to learn. And like, it's just amazing how much I have changed as a person from who I was in high school. And although my boyfriend was my high school sweetheart, I have changed. I am a new woman, okay? Then I went to Colorado and forgot about my obligations. Hello, this is Kara speaking. I am reporting from an airplane. I'm officially the nothing the last song. I cannot get through this book. I read it and I get two pages in and I just have to put it down. It's just so bad. There's so many problems with a lot of the characters. The only character I actually like is Jonah. I will be giving an update when I actually come home, but I just can't do this anymore. All right, I am back. So 
I know my last clip was a little chaotic because I was in an airplane, but that was the moment I decided I was done. So I decided to stop reading this book around like page 230. And normally by that point, I would just finish the book, but honestly, it was such a slog. I could not keep picking it up. I would literally pick it up and I had all day to read pretty much yesterday when we were in the airport and I just couldn't. It was brutal. I felt like the characters were so problematic. Like Marcus was just horrible, even though I know he was like the villain. The, his internal monologue was disgusting. I know he's kind of like a main side character of the book and I was just like, I don't want to keep reading this. Honestly, I thought Will was a little problematic too. I thought a lot of his commentary, it almost made it sound like he was like not fetishizing, but like it almost was like he had a thing for like mysterious girls or like girls who aren't easily misunderstood. And he just kept saying that about Ronnie over and over and over again. And it's like, do you actually like her or are you just enraptured by her mysterious uh, way she comes off, I guess? It was strange. The only person that I actually liked from this book was Jonah, who is the little brother. He is a gem. Okay, so you're kind of following like Will and Ronnie's relationship. And then you also have this side plot about like this turtle thing. And I don't know, I just don't think that like I cared about anything that was happening in this book. I know like the relationship with the dad gets a little bit more explored as you go along, but I was just not willing to stick around. I didn't care about the main romance that was happening. I like Ronnie, but like not as much as I thought I did. I don't know, my tastes have changed. I think that's just coming away. The whole takeaway from this vlog is that my tastes have changed and I think they've changed in a very good way. Like looking back on like the fact that I used to idolize that relationship in that book was an issue. I am glad I have come away on the other side and understanding what a healthy relationship looks like now and how those books are sold to teenagers, but they're just like so problematic and they like, it's not realistic. I didn't like it. I didn't even like it for just entertainment. Like I, th I thought it was really hard for me to set all of those problematic issues aside to actually enjoy the story. I was just like getting more and more annoyed at the characters as we kept going along. Wow, I really didn't expect that to go from a five star to a DNF. I guess that's just what happens sometimes. I am not going to be reading another Nicholas Sparks book. I am out of this mood now. I need to move on with my life and actually find a five star read for this year because it has taken too long, okay? If you enjoyed this reading vlog, please give this video a thumbs up and comment down below if you would like to see more reading vlogs. I I actually really enjoy making them because it's kind of like a lot easier just to fill my normal life. Yeah, if you want to hear about some books that I actually love, check out this video right here because I talk about all of my five star books in like a bunch of different genres and I actually really, really love that video. Yeah, go check it out if you actually want some good books to read. Okay, I will see you guys next time. Peace out. Bye.